What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Breaking Tackles, the New York Giants podcast. I am your host, Antonio Reyes. What's going on, everybody? We are coming off a nasty defeat to the Dallas Cowboys, and we will go ahead and review that loss right here at Breaking Tackles. First and foremost, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to the podcast. If you could like the episode and subscribe to the channel, I appreciate that a whole ton. And um, guys, let's break down this ugly game between the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. Uh, the New York Giants got smoked by the Dallas Cowboys. And yes, the score was a blowout, but honestly, the game itself against the Giants... In my opinion, it was a close game. We're talking about at one point in the second quarter, it was it was ten um, ten. We did ended up giving up a a two a a, la, a under two minute touchdown again at the end of the half. Um, and we done that too often. And, I, and I'll break down that play too uh, for you guys in terms of what happened there. It's pretty simple, man. There's a lot of mistakes with people on the field but there's also mistakes and primarily in my opinion it's with this coaching staff and how they're playing their players and first and foremost we're going to talk about both the defense and the offense let's talk about the offense first and we'll talk about the good and the bad of the offense all right so the good and the number one thing that pops up into the into my head is the total yards the giants got the giants got almost 400 yards of offense Listen, moving the ball down the field was not the problem of this offense. It was obviously the same problem that we have over and over, and it was to score the actual points. But we did a good job moving the ball down the field, and that's including Daniel Jones leaving for the game, and Mike Glennon came in, and he did a serviceable, serviceable job. Um, what else can we say about this offense that we like what we saw Kadarius Tony, what's the the big bright spot about this whole offense? We might have discovered our next gem. After this game, there's no way you don't have Kadarius Tony as the number one threat in the chart. In the depth charts, he needs to be number one. Galladay number two. And then you could play situation based on what type of play you're running as number three. It could be Shep, it could be Slayton, it could be Ross. Doesn't matter. But Kadarius Tony should never be off the field unless it's to get a water break. That man just completely balled out. Uh, real quick, tell you about his numbers. Um, he had 10 receptions for 189 yards. He averaged about 18.9 yards a carry. Uh, a reception and that was enough to break Odell Beckham's rookie record of single yards in a game I think Odell had 185 or 180 and, and Kadarius Tony had 189 on 10 receptions uh, that's pretty much where you could go as far as the good of this offense Again, I thought that Jason Garrett had a really good plan when it came to the offense and moving the ball down the field. It was spread offense, and we were keeping the the, the Dallas Cowboys spread. You know, so it was hard for them to get blitzes and stuff like that without us picking it up pretty simple. I think that's how you kind of make a complicated scheme in terms of like the defense, in terms of what the defense is showing you, you spread them out. So it's really easy to see what the defense is trying to do to you. And that's about it. That's about where I could go in terms of the offense and the positives. The negatives. Let's talk about that exact same thing, the spread formation. When the Giants reached inside the 10, inside the 20, that spread formation left out the building long and gone, especially when they were inside the 10. The New York Giants decided, oh, they're going to go into tight formations, bunch formations, get away from 11 personnel, and start running uh, two tight ends, three tight ends, and go into this jumble formation, including the one time that they ended up going in jumble formation, <clears throat> uh, they ended up on first and second down trying to run a dive play because they were like inside the five to score a touchdown. On the third down, Daniel Jones, what looks like, to be honest, now that I'm, I saw 
one of the um, coaches' cams, uh, the the eleven, the the twenty-two personnel camera. It looked like Daniel Jones just straight up improvised, and he took the ball to himself. He rolled it out because the tight end Kyle Rudolph, and then the left tackle, I believe, uh, or the guard, I'm not sure, but they were like clueless as to seeing Daniel Jones rolling out with that ball. And I, I honestly, I'm, I'm a, a hundred percent sure that Daniel Jones ran that play on his own and he did it on his own. And that's awesome. I'll be honest. Like that, that's the type of leadership that I want to see Daniel Jones do take more things upon himself. Unfortunately, that was the end of his day as he got concussed pretty bad. He was wobbling and, and falling, you know, tripping over his own feet and, and enter uh, Mike Lennon after that. Um, again, it was just a really weird play, and I would love to hear some more about what happened in that play particularly. Was it a design? Was it Did he take it upon himself to do that? Uh, hopefully, we get that answer soon. So enter Mike Glennon. Mike Glennon, to be honest, looked really good to me. I was, I was pleasantly surprised how he had a really good control of his offense, to be honest. Uh... He looked better than Jones. Jones was rattled pretty much for the first quarter and much of the second quarter. Eventually, Jones, on that drive that he got concussed, he got in a nice groove and he was very accurate and, and, and doing his thing. But before that, it was just a lot of opportunities that was left on the field by, by the New York Giants, especially because the defense gave the Giants a lot of opportunities. The Giants' defense only gave up three points in the first quarter had two turnovers and one field goal in that. And that's where you had to capitalize and the Giants didn't. But anyhow, same thing for Glennon where he was able to call audibles. He was flipping formations. He was doing back shoulder throws. I was in shock, honestly, when I saw this. Because when was the last time that we saw Daniel Jones do back shoulder throws? I don't think I have seen Daniel Jones do a back shoulder throws this entire season. And... Much less flip formations. I saw the Giants flip formations. I saw the Giants run a little bit more motion. There was just a little bit more creativity on the field. And again, the Giants didn't have a problem moving down the field. But again, when it got inside the, the red zone, it was this really conservative, really tight formation stuff that we saw all day from Garrett. And, and that's pretty much it. That's why the this Giant offense was just barely was able to score two touchdowns and a field goal. And, you know, that's unfortunately all that we got out of the Giants uh, for for this game was two touchdowns and two field goals. I mean, um, Jason Garrett, man, needs to open up this offense. That's all I got to say, honestly. And, and you know what? And I said this on Twitter, and I'll say it right now on my podcast. I'm honestly done with kind of bashing Daniel Jones. I'm not going to go as hard as Daniel Jones as I've been doing all season and even last year because... It's just, it is what it is. He needs to, I need to see J Daniel Jones with a new offensive coordinator because Jason Garrett is not only killing Daniel Jones, he is killing Saquon. He is killing any, any offensive threat in this offense is getting, it's not reaching their full potential because of Jason Garrett and his schemes. Kyle Rudolph has been irrelevant. He's only had, I think, one catch or something of that sort. He's been used as a blocking tight end. Um, and I, and the fact that we have to always have somebody babysitting Nate Solder is comical to me. Nate Solder needs to be off the field as soon as possible. Judge did mention that Matt Purr is going to go ahead and get snaps along with Nate Solder. I think that's just a very nice way of saying, you know, Matt Purr eventually is going to take over the job. If you see what's going on with Soldier on tape, he is getting just abused. Like, seriously, anybody could be do Like, I don't think anybody else could be doing a worse job. I, I don't know about better in this, in, in this roster, but I know they can't be doing worse than what he's doing right now. And, and getting Matt Pearl in the lineup, it, it's something that the Giants must do as soon as possible. Um, they didn't have, obviously, Andrew Thomas in that game, but hopefully he will be 
back in the next game. I honestly, the Giants didn't give up a sack on offense. That's another great thing, uh, another good thing that happened. There was a lot of pressure, yeah. Um, but, th guys, you're not going to have the Saints game again happen where it was like a clean pocket almost all the time. It, it, uh, that's not realistic to expect that. It's just that was the equivalent of a no-hitter in baseball brought to football. Like the Giants offensive line was throwing through a no hitter. They weren't perfect. It wasn't a perfect game, but it was a no hitter because it was just all day to throw, do your thing. In this one, there was a lot of pressure. It wasn't all day to throw, but I would have loved to see the quarterbacks, especially Jones, just use his legs more to either buy time, roll out to the left or to the right, or step up the pocket. They was just if, if you know if, if you go to my Twitter page, you could see that I showed where he did have chances to either roll out or step up in the pocket. Um, but again, that's another thing where the Giants have to do a better job where to get Daniel Jones to start off better. I think this game the Giants did lack screens. Again, that's something with Jason Garrett. It's like if there's not one thing missing, it's another thing missing. It can never be a, a complete offensive play called game. Um, and again, that's another big reason why I'm saying, hey, I want to wait till next year till we get another offensive coordinator in here, a more, a, a better offensive coordinator here, just to see if maybe Daniel Jones and this offense could do more next year. Last thing I'm saying about the offense is on Kadarius Tony record breaking day, he also ended up getting ejected from the game because he threw a punch at the Dallas Cowboys player. Listen, was it was it right to do that? Absolutely not. And my supporting of him doing that, no. But I am gonna say this. I remember playing football also way back high school. And if we were in a game where we were getting blown out, my coach would say, have some pride out there. Stop letting these guys push you around. Stop being, you know, soft. And the Cowboys were blowing out the New York Giants and also were trying to impose their will on them, trying to push them around. There was a lot of cheap shop, a lot of dirty stuff going on for the, from the Dallas Cowboys to the New York Giants. And Tony had enough of it. Again, he'll learn from this. Hopefully, he'll learn from this and not make that same mistake again. Uh, but I thought because of the situation of the game, that was more positive than negative. What I did not like was Coach Judge screaming and telling Kadarius Tony to get the F off the field, get the F off the field. I, I would have loved to see Coach grab Tony Give him a little pep talk, point some fingers at his way, and tell him, you know, get off the field. And then later address it. I felt like this was the first time that I saw Judge's um, kind of like armor break in front of us. And that bothered me a little and kind of has me kind of second-guessing Coach Judge. Again, and the reason why I'm saying this is this. You don't go ahead and you publicly like like humiliate your own player because your players are looking at you and what you're doing too. And I'm pretty sure there had to be a couple of players there out there with like, yo, what the hell is Judge doing, man? Like, man, that was not cool at all. And I'm pretty sure that that that, that has to be the mentality in the locker room, at least for a few. And, and this could lead to other... You know, a, a bigger problem down the line. So the Giants do need to listen. At the end of the day, winning solves problems internally and externally. So hopefully, uh, this is this doesn't blow up. This doesn't become something crazy. But it it, it did have like Odell Beckham type of locker room disruption uh, type of flashback or feel to this situation. Hopefully, it doesn't get to that. And um, nothing. Let's just move forward from all on and let's go ahead and talk about the defense now. All right, guys. So the Giants defense honestly did what it could. Let's just talk about one thing for sure is that the offensive line and just the Dallas offense and the Dallas defense for that matter were just a bigger, stronger team than the New York Giants. And you could definitely see 
the Giants' best case scenario happened for them in this game. The only way the Giants were going to keep up, stay in this game was if they get turnovers and if they and if their offense scores. Well, one of those things happened. The first three drive for the Dallas Cowboys, first drive of the game, interception. Um, uh, Carter tipped the ball, caught an interception. That was, the, that was the first big play that he's done all year, pretty much, in my opinion. And it, it was a big play indeed. We started at the 50. We didn't get any points off of that. Then the uh, Cow Dallas Cowboys, I believe they hit a field goal after that. So there's three points. We didn't respond with any points after that. And then the Dallas Cowboys go ahead and they fumble the ball. And I believe we might have gotten a total of three points in those three drives, which is, again, inexcusable. This defense cannot keep up with the Dallas offense. The best case scenario happened. You needed to put points on the board so that this defense could have felt confident enough to, to just keep playing with them. But when you don't have points on the board and now the Dallas offense has everything to do where it's they could pass, they could, they could run. And let me tell you right now, when they were doing the two-guard pull, it was either a, a two-guard pull or a guard and a tackle pull, that play was just getting a whole bunch of yards. Xavier Simenez was just getting just pushed five yards back, it looked like. It was like a, it was a decent amount of yards he was getting pushed back. Um, so the good in this defense was that they got the best case scenario that happened. Austin Johnson looks good, man. He is playing really good out there. I'm really surprised about that. But he is putting up some good-looking stats out there. And he just looked good. He is, he is he is doing that job at nose tackle that we needed to fill that void from Dalvin Tomlinson. Reggie Ragland played his best game on linebacker. He was making a lot of plays. He had to have at least two, two minimum tackles for a loss in that play and uh we'll check it out right now actually it looks like he got one um it was a lot of good close plays to the line of scrimmage too uh, he got he got uh seven total tackles five solo and anthony johnson um just like we spoke about uh he ended up austin johnson i apologize austin johnson got two tackles for a loss and that's something that you definitely want to see out of your lineman only three tackles for a loss during the entire game so the penetration honestly wasn't there um, I think Xavier Jimenez had, had a terrible game. Uh, and I honestly want to see Ojolari start over Zimenez. Um, just because of how badly Zimenez was getting pushed around there. I, I really didn't appreciate that. Um, the big problem with the Giants defense, and this is what I've gotten to see. The Giants' defense is not confident enough right now or not good enough. It's a combination of both to play man coverage, especially when the Giants are blitzing. I know the Giants got, you know, new toys on the defense. By the way, we lost Martinez, so that's that. But Martinez wasn't even a good, um, a good, uh, a good, um, Pass coverage linebacker, but we got a Dory Jackson, and now Patrick Graham is trying to get real cute playing pass coverage with a lot of man. Where honestly, I feel like this team would thrive more with zone. And in that two minute drive, again, I posted the video on t on Twitter. You could check it out. There was less damage done to the New York Giants and more opportunities when they were playing zone. And when they were playing man, they was just straight up getting cooked. Our safeties were not effective. Uh, I think Julian Love playing safety in a deep high is a big mistake. This kid is good for blitzing a quarterback or for just getting run plays down there. He has kind of like that Jabril Peppers thing going on where they both can make tackles and they're pretty good blitzers. But other than that, man, I just do not want to see Julian Love back there in the field. And to be honest, I don't even want to see Julian Love in this team. I I'm good on Julian Love. I don't think he has the speed to play in the NFL, at least not in our scheme where, where we're trying to go this man-heavy stuff. The man coverage is just not working on the team. It's because we just don't have the talent for that, to be honest, guys. Uh, that's going to wrap it up pretty much 
what I have to say about this team. Um, again, m my biggest takeaway from this is, first of all, we got so many injuries on offense. It's going to be interesting to see. And we're going to break down that Rams tape, and we're going to see how bad really these Rams are or how good they are. Um, are they going to be imposing their will just like the Dallas Cowboys is? But let's put Tony, Kadarius Tony, as our number one wide receiver in the depth chart. And let's go ahead and run more zone on defense. I think that's the only way that we're going to succeed coming up next week. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If you have any questions, any comments, anything you guys want to say about the show, please absolutely go ahead and do it under the comments. I would love to interact with you guys. Also, again, one more time, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Um, if I'm doing a bad job, let me know, please, in the comments. And if I'm doing a great job, Please let me know in the comments. I appreciate anything and everything, any participation from you guys. Guys, uh, for Breaking Tackles, I'm Antonio Reyes. And, uh, have a great one. Bye-bye.